Hello, everybody. I'm Lisa Burwell, your host of V Speaks Conversations with Heart and Soul. This is a podcast that we started two years ago and is a sister to our magazine, V Magazine, now in its 15th year, going strong. But this podcast allows us to talk deep at deeper levels and bring to life the stories in the pages of the magazine and beyond. And today I am so excited to bring you two beautiful young guests who are starting a new business and that I don't know very much about. So I am going to be the student and they're going to be my and your teacher today. And that is, let me introduce you drum roll, please, to Joey and Lexi, Joey Bowler and Lexi Rotten. Soon to, they're engaged and soon to be married. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. I'm so glad to be here. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm excited about what you're doing. Just the, the brief little bit that we've been conversing and a little bit that I've been reading up on you. I think it's amazing to go forward and do your passion. And um, it's such a different topic, but one that I know we're going to learn a lot and is very valuable. So mm -hmm. take a, the name of your company is Vale of Paradise Mushrooms. And so you just told me the backstory and the meaning of that, if you could share that with our guests. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm from Valparaiso, which is across the bay from Destin. Um, my family's been there since, I want to say, the early 40s. That's when my grandfather moved there. He started working on Eglin Air Force Base. Um, so it's always been very close to home for me, obviously. Um, so in Spanish, Valparaiso stands for Vale of Paradise. So um, when I was young, I always knew I wanted to do some type of business, and that's the name I wanted to carry to it. So as I kind of evolved in my life, I found the mushrooms, and it just worked out really, really perfectly. Awesome. That's such a good story. Mm -hmm. And then so you had a trip out to uh, Telluride, mm -hmm. and you attended a, a mushroom festival. Tell us about that, because that was the genesis, I think, in your car ride home. And, and just share that story with us. Yeah. So kind of before that, I started finding out about the mushrooms and it was me and my dad both actually. Um, so we started our, our knowledge and our interest started getting peaked on the mushrooms. Um, and so we actually, before that, I, f um, I went and took a, I mentored under a farm in Teton, El Paso, Texas. Um, I stayed down there for about a week or so learning like the trade and all that and how, how people set up their farms. So did that for about a week. And then we went to the mushroom festival and that's where everything just went kind of crazy for me. And I saw the whole world and the way everything that was going on in that. But um, so, yeah, it was like a four or five day festival up in Telluride, Colorado. Um, and then on the way home, we actually got to see the totality eclipse that happened, that special eclipse um, back then. And so we had to divert and go a few states over because the traffic was so bad um, leaving that event. And so I had a few extra hours to actually start studying on my phone and looking stuff up like that. But yeah, pretty much the whole 28, 30 hour car ride home, I was just, you know, researching mushrooms and learning about it and seeing how people did it. And um, whenever I got home, that was in the, the winter and I set up my first growing operation there in my, in my parents' three car garage. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so at the festival, I tell you, ride, what was happening there? Was it kind of like a tricked out, um, you know, farmer's market or was it more uh, educational than that? What was it like? Yeah, it's very educational. Um, they definitely have a market set up there and um, some type of retail, but it's a five day festival um, three to five day festival. And they basically, there's, they talk about all different, um, things in mushroom, in the mushroom world, whether that's, um, micro remediation, which has to deal with erosion and soil and doing like more earthly things with the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. There was the business side to it. Um, you know, there's a medicinal side to it, really all that kind of stuff. So there's basically different classes going on or all around the town teaching, mm -hmm. you know, different things like that. Right. So, so let me ask you this. If, do you think that if the farm in table move farm to table movement like didn't happen do you think that mushrooms would be able to like enter center stage right now or do you think it kind of was is all part of that movement i think that they're they're definitely they go together but there's been something i, I think right now i tell people we're in a mushroom renaissance right now so besides the farm to table movement, I think that the mush the fungi was always going to emerge mm. because of everything that goes along with it. It's just absolutely incredible what you can do with mushrooms. I mean, they're making surfboards with it. They're making styrofoam with it. Um, I mean, just I had no idea making clothing with it. It's really, yeah, it's really crazy. So just with the renewability of mushrooms okay. and the sustainability of everything, um, it's really it's kind of turned it into what it is. So I don't. 
I think that they have, I think it helped with the mushrooms at the rate yeah. that, that we see it now. Um, I did not know this. But yeah, I, I think mushrooms are going to take over and they always were going to. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So talk about the medicinal. The uses. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's- um, so there's, you know, people get confused sometimes when you say medicinal mushrooms, their minds can go to like the magic and the hallucinogenic. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of medicinal benefits in pr- pretty much every mushroom. All mushrooms are magic. Yeah. Um, but specifically, there's certain um, antioxidants, there's certain polysaccharides, there's anti-inflammatory properties that are in them. Um, there's stuff that can help your brain. There's stuff that can help your heart. You mm-hmm. know, that, but it's, it's really, really amazing. And you can take you can use the mushrooms in many different forms in order mm-hmm. to get those benefits, whether it's cooking with them, mm-hmm. using supplement forms, um, extract forms and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But um, it gets pretty intricate with all that. Well, you can tell you have a, a wealth of knowledge and you're also very passionate about it, which are two things that, you know, you will need as you're launching at this business, which is so exciting. And Lexi, let's um, dial you into the conversation too about you met a couple of years ago at the, at a farmer's market, I think you said, and you have a background that somehow dovetails into Joey's um, mission and everything that you're doing and you're co-laboring together. Tell us about that. Right. Yeah. So whenever we met, like I said, I had no idea about the mushroom world, how um, big of a part it could play um, just in anyone's life, let alone mine and ours together. But um, as I've, you know, I went to the farmer's market, met Joey, um, just got some simple mushrooms, cooked them up. Never, you know, I'm just used to the grocery store mushrooms, portobello, shiitake, the simple mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, But he gave me some oyster mushrooms, I think. And It just kind of opened up my mind to a world of um, not only veganism, but Mm. using the mushrooms in in the meal um, as a star, you know, as your Mm -hmm. protein, your um, all your minerals Mm -hmm. and all your vitamins and things like that. Um, But, yeah, after I experienced that, I was like, I got to go get more mushrooms. And I think that we see that how excited people can get about Mm -hmm. um, mushrooms alone, just using Mm -hmm. them every week. Mm -hmm. So um, I fell in love with them myself and how they've helped me, how I get to help people. So um, with my background, just with my grandma raising me and my mom in the holistic world and the Mm -hmm. holistic mindset, Mm -hmm. um, just with nutrition and then what you can supplement in your their daily routine. I think we see a lot of that mm-hmm. in um, a lot of people realizing that there's so many more healthier options right. and just mushrooms. Right. Know? Have you um, had any professional photos taken of um, like plated um, use of the mushrooms? Have you done we, any of that? We've yeah, done some with Chandler have. with Modus. Oh, you did? Okay, a good. A while ago. Um, we've had a few different shoots and stuff like that. Okay. Not too many though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to, I asked that and for a reason I'll tell you. Um, we are publishing a cookbook in April called Cook by V. Okay. And I think it would be really great to have um, a visual right. um, depiction of what you're doing right now because I think it, it dovetails into all of the cooking and the culinary scene that's going on down here. So I just didn't know if like you were at that stage where we would be able to take a photo or you had any photos. So we'll talk about that Absolutely. after and I'll give you more information on it. But I think that would add a really nice layer to all that's going on that we're trying to expose with how our area of the world is so good on so many levels, but this, the culinary scene here, even the the health and wellness Mm -hmm. um, scene that we have here, especially on 30A. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think we seem like some of the healthiest, um, you know, specimens of humans (laughs) walking around. I I feel like we're sticking together. We all kind of are pretty into it, you know, on some level, some more than others. You know, I'm not like totally hardcore, but I'm the healthiest I've been probably in my life because you change your mindset to Mm -hmm. to um, learn and grow. And like I'm very interested in what you're having to say, one, because I don't know anything about it. But two, I do know instinctively and just by from a macro version that there are like very good properties for us for in mushrooms, you know? Yes. The most common question we get is, what do we do with these? So so that would absolutely be very helpful for everyone. Right. And Mm -hmm. like, so in, in what you were saying, like, like how many different kinds, I didn't know, you know, I mean, I, I'm like you, it was, you know, the portobello and, you know, in Chautauqua. Yeah. Right. So what, like, give me some names of like the oyster mushroom yeah. room that she's talking about. So at our farm, we deal with 13 species. Okay. Um, so oysters, chestnut, king trumpet, um, 
what, what, what else? Wow. Black King, Lion's, Lion's, Lion's Mane. Yeah. And then wow. there's multiple different um, species of uh, oyster mushrooms alone. So elm, Italian, um, blue, golden, wow. different colors, pink. Yeah, there's um, tropical mushrooms, cold weather mushrooms. Yeah, so. um, I think... I know, I want to say there's I, I I'm not I'm not even gonna quote this because I know my number's wrong but there's we say millions 13. and millions we said thirteen for the past couple of years it's probably more than that or less right um, give or take on the time okay but. edible species there's tens of tens of thousands really of yeah. so and you are growing all of them mm-hmm. so the soil then that we have here that you have where you are is you know I mean can they grow anywhere is the soil especially ripe for what you're doing right now. It's a great question. So we actually create our own soil, soil. essentially. Oh, so how do you do that? I can show. I, okay, if, yeah, yeah, sure. If, if it's a, sure. this is okay. a really okay. good visual. All right. For everyone. See, I asked a good question on something I don't know anything about. Mm-hmm. No, that's a great question. But pretty much, this is a scaled down version of how we grow. So okay. this is a kit we put together so you can grow it at the house. Oh. Um, and this is going to be specifically a lion's mane mushroom. Um, but basically what we do in a larger version is we break down organic woods like maple, hickory, oak, stuff like that. And then we'll combine it with another feed, maybe um, like wheat bran or something like that, something organic. Um, and we'll combine the two in a, in a ratio that works. We include some water and a few other like natural things like that. Um, and then we will cook these, sterilize these bags for about uh, 24 to 36 hours, uh-huh. depending on how many we're cooking. Mm-hmm. So what that does is that kills any bacteria, good or bad in here. And so in a sterile environment, in a laboratory setting, which we have, we'll introduce a mushroom culture into this bag, which is all this white stuff that you see. Mm-hmm. It's called mycelium. So over a 10 to 12 day process, that mycelium will colonize or inoculate this whole bag. Um, it'll go from this loose, you know, woody material to this completely dense. I'll, I'll let you okay, let see it too. Oh, <laughs> oh, so oh that's a gosh. living organism right there. Oh my gosh. So once it colonizes it, it's completely living. And then uh, all it needs at that point is the right conditions to grow mushrooms. So usually what that means is you'll cut it open. You get oxygen. Um, whenever you're making that cut, you're also getting humidity and then maybe some light and stuff like that. So, so what is the light, the growth life of a mushroom once it is ready and primed with your um, soil? So it takes about 12 days for that organism to colonize all the way through. And okay. then as far as growing and fruiting is what we call it, it's very quickly. It's five to seven days typically. Really? So, um, And then some can be even quicker. Maybe some are a little bit slower. But on average, it's the full fruiting of a mushroom is about five days. Wow. So very, very quick. And then oh. it's really cool. So people are familiar with a, an older way of growing mushrooms was on logs. So you would actually kind of do this. This is a basically a sped up version of a log. We broke everything down. Okay. But what goes on is you get multiple flushes. So whenever these mushrooms, like the lion's mane, grows out, once you pick it, about a week later, you get a second flush. So these things can go on for a little bit, which is nice. Um, but that's kind of, that's a good way to describe the growing process. So that's excellent and very interesting. So are you selling this, what you're selling your mushrooms, you know, to consumer to consumer right now, and then other people too, you'll be getting into restaurants and, and whatnot and online. Mm-hmm. But are you also part of the business model or the passion to have people buy the soil and get into making their own as well, growing their own as well. Absolutely. Okay. It's all part of it. That's all part of it. Yeah, we do. um, I mean, we make these first, like I said, to sell. um, And then we also, we have a bunch of other things. We have a whole part of our business where we can actually do like farm consulting. So we can come to your house and set up a little, like whether it's a log or something like this, something a little more small scale, but definitely we want to get this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. in people's hands. So you have 4,600 square feet right now. Mm -hmm. And so then what, what I think I hear you saying, then you you could teach people to have sort of a microcosm mm-hmm. of your own large facility so that they can grow their mushrooms too. Yep. So they can get fresh, wow. clean, healthy mushrooms at home. Wow. No, never touched by anyone other than them. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty that's, amazing. That's been the big move over here to Santa Rosa Beach about two years ago was kind of for that because um, the facility in my parents' garage wasn't conducive to having people. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't conducive to what? To having, oh, having, people, having people over. Other than yeah. friends, maybe. Yeah, you were a garage band. E- exactly. Now, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're building, the, over here, we're, what we're working on is more of like a state-of-the-art facility that we can actually host tours at and have mm. people, you know, for different classes, whether that's cooking or education or, you know. Helps. And you've already scouted out and found your land in Point Washington for mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. And when will the facility move from where it is right now to Point Washington? Hopefully if 
uh, well, you never know. But yeah, but like, what's the plan? We're planning by the end of the year, definitely. So okay, um, we're kind of working on all that right now. But I, I, I see by the end of the year us having people on on property in Point Washington. Then that so. is so exciting. We're we're really hoping for that. Okay, mm-hmm. that's amazing. I can see, um, I hope you have a, a lot of land there too, because I could see like dinners and, you Absolutely. know, symposiums and education and then like probably, you know, teaming up with various people in our area that are very into, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, whatever, vegan, healthy, wellness, you know, eating, you know, from the ground and whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we have big plans for a lot of that. Oh, I won't say too much. Okay. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't say too much. But so let's talk about the business side of it because, mm-hmm. um, or even the inspirational side of it, maybe both of them. So your background, um, you touched on, we were talking a little bit before we started about, you do have some type of an architect, uh, 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 agricultural background. You have a business um, major, mm-hmm. your business major, you have a, your degree in that. And what else do you think um, you had in your uh proclivity for this business uh, besides running a business like that led you into this? I think for me, it was the restaurant. So I worked in Destin for about eight years. Um, and so really just being around, it wasn't mushrooms being cooked, but yeah. just being around all that mm-hmm. really just showed me um, the business side of it and how how to create and something like that. But yeah, mm-hmm. the restaurant and the farm to table movement, I think really just kind of put me into the mushrooms. I knew it was something I was capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, just from seeing it, but Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's the answer for me. So how did you even get to the Telluride festival? Like how did it go from what what I'm hearing you saying to, Oh, like, I think I'm going to go to that festival on Telluride, which kind of like spawned like this great desire and direction for you. I was really looking for something at that point, um, something. And when I heard about the mushrooms, I latched onto it and went full force into it. Never turned back. It was I knew I had such a good feeling and so much confidence going into it and just knowing that I was capable of doing it and mm-hmm. also the way that, that the market was going. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I just, when I saw, I heard of it, I just dove straight in. I'm so excited for you both. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what the day in the life of you both look like when you're, um, going in different directions, running, um, farmers markets and selling your wares. Yeah. So we stay pretty busy. It's, um, it's very important to be there, just like traditional farming, you know, doing crop row, you know, yes. all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You're you live there on the land, you farm it. It's the same with the indoor farming. We really have it's very hands on. We have to be there for it all. Mm-hmm. Um, so Monday through Friday, we're just kind of what I, like I was just describing with the bag, you know, we're creating stuff like that, working with mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And then by the time the weekend hits, we're you're at the festival, at the, far, at, yep, at the markets, yeah. um, you know, selling, talking about mushrooms and all that. And we do five every single weekend. So it does. That's keep, a lot for a weekend for a two day period of time. Yes. It keeps us very busy. Yeah. And are you loading? Is there a lot of things that you're transporting? You have a big mm-hmm. truck or something and you're Absolutely, able to transport? Yeah, we, Definitely. We load a lot of equipment every weekend. So it yeah. kind of keeps us in shape. <laughs> I know that sure. would keep you in shape. Yeah, we're thankful for our team too. Um, yes. They help a lot. That is so We kind of divide cool. and conquer on the weekends mm-hmm. and then gather again on Mondays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you get rained out on Sunday? Because I re- it did. It did? Yeah. 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 We were actually coming back in town from Colorado where we got engaged. Though, oh, so. did you just get engaged? Just oh, my gosh. Yeah. This is very new. <laughs> it's very okay. New. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. A week today, actually. A week today. I'm so happy for you both. Yeah, when so, do you have a date? No, we want, we want to finish that Point Washington facility and then okay. kind of, yeah. uh, that's what we're thinking. Okay. So. Yeah, that, that actually might be the location to get married. So uh, yeah, Point Washington, so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. A little side note, though, we did meet at the Rosemary Farmer's Market three years ago. Oh, so you did meet there? At the January shoot, three yes. years ago. Oh, uh, so. were you just... Um, the, I was on my lunch break. Oh, okay. I, I worked in Rosemary for a couple years. Okay. And then, mm-hmm. That is so sweet. I I wish you all the happiness and (laughs) love and success, which I know you're going to have. So I feel real good about it. Oh my gosh. So, um, do you, I know you're like supercharged on this and you're moving forward and everything. Um, and you have such a zest for it, which is so good and you need it and all that. Um, are you met with any obstacles? Like every, we all have challenges when we're starting something. Have you been met with something was like, wow, I didn't really see this one coming. I'm going to have to figure this out. Yeah, f- for sure. Okay. I mean, in a mushroom farmer's life, that's every day. You have to yes. know how to do so much because we work with electrical equipment. You know, we work <laughs> with construction stuff, just having to, you know, make shift and build something real quick. So we, ro- we run into problems all the time with that, but we get better um, 
every day, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, on the business side, there's been, I think, one or two companies that have came up. So there's a little bit of competition. Oh, really? In the now. Okay. Since we started, we started in 2017. So mm. not so much of a difficulty for us, though. I mean, we like to see that. It encourages us and encourages them. Yeah, you were in the right moving in the right direction if other people are also wanting to Absolutely. do it as well. So Absolutely. that's good. Yeah, it's we good. encourage it. We, yeah. we like to stick together. Yeah. And then just on the business side, just only being in business for five years, there's been some obstacles that we've learned about. Um, yeah. A big thing for us that we've learned in the past year, yeah. some tough lessons is um, ownership. Um, whether that's in a building or like a leasing situation or something, we just really wanted to get our own control because we ran into some obstacles where it wasn't, mm -hmm. let's say, our building or mm -hmm. our property. Mm -hmm. and, you know, then you never know what will happen. You, never you know could what get will you, they they could ask you to leave. They could sell a building, and then your whole business is uh -huh. destroyed. Exactly, and we have run into some stuff like that. So we've had some setbacks in that way yeah. to the ultimate goal of where we want to be. Um, but that's a big thing for us going into this year is just ownership and yeah. making sure everything we do is solidified. Basically, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah the the whole business building thing um, that I have found and that I've seen in other people's businesses as well that or succeed and those that don't is um, foundation building where, and, and, you know, when you're digging down, right, nobody sees that. Right. I mean, especially you can relate to this as, you know, you know, mm -hmm. digging down in the soil and all that. And, um, you know, sometimes if the business is going to be really big, you have to dig for a longer period of time, you know, before you actually see it like sprouting from the ground. So mm -hmm. it's always good to understand like, that just like in a building, if you're building a house, there's a foundation that has to be there before you can see it. Uh, you have to do the same thing with the business too. So you can be really strong. I know that about 10 years ago, uh, you know, the market had changed or maybe it was longer than that. Actually, it was more like 15 years ago. It had changed so dramatic, dramatically, the uh, stock market crashed and we had been in business for about 15 years then. And um, I was wondering if we could still stand and then I had to reinvent ourselves, but I knew that our foundation was really, really strong. And just having that epiphany one day, I realized, you know, that that's that foundation has it can be said for something that if you withstood the test of time already, that you can continue to withstand it. So I think it's really smart of you that you're understanding that before you become very successful in midstream, that your own foundation is solidified mm -hmm. uh super super important very important yeah your foundation's everything i think it, it, yeah and it really is i mean mm -hmm. it took me like 15 years to understand that myself mm -hmm. when i was uh, in business just like so busy and then i went wait a second that's some deep deep digging 15 years of digging it's hard to knock that down mm -hmm. and it's time you know people don't like to put time into things um, but sometimes time is very, very, very necessary, mm -hmm. um, more often than not. So, you know, I think you can understand that principle, you know, took me a much longer time to get it. But so I think you're more than moving in the right direction. And I super like your hat. <laughs> oh, so is that your merch? No, it's, it's not it was a Christmas gift. This, this Christmas. from you, Lexi. It's we really do. nice. It is cute. Yeah, We do have some merch coming pretty soon. Though, because, so. you know, I'd buy that. <laughs> <laughs> so you really have to get some hats or some we will. yeah keep an eye out for that. yes i will good good job that's really nice yeah <laughs> yeah that's so cool mm -hmm. so um this is a crazy wild card question but i'd like to throw it out even when uh, i'm a business consultant too in a marketing company besides just mm -hmm. having the magazine so I, I ask questions like this when I'm deciding like, you know, what people are doing and do they, are they going the distance? So tell, go down the road 10 years from now. Okay. What are you doing? What does it look like? What does this business look like 10 years from now? So a goal of ours long-term has always been um, basically the Emerald Coast. So we want to supply everyone we can in the Emerald Coast, um, continue to do the markets, expand, um, get mushrooms more in more people's hands, basically. But we definitely, within 10 years, the plan is to have a full, fully operational facility that hosts all types of classes. Um, it can be a, kind of a one-stop shop for, we'd like to bring in, you know, other good quality products as well. Um, so we'll have that. Um, but I don't know, I think just growing more mushrooms, mm -hmm. having a, a host place where everyone can come and learn about mm -hmm. them, talk about them, eat them, mm -hmm. cook with them, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's something that's very important for us. So we would really mm -hmm. like to be, you know, 
those mushroom farmers here. <laughs> awesome. In Coast. I love Short it. Mary. It's so old fashioned, but so heartwarming, you know, like back to the days of when like, you know, everything wasn't mass produced and you're actually growing things and eating things. It makes me feel so good mm -hmm. um, that we're getting back to that and gravitating toward as the world is speeding in a different direction, which it is. Mm -hmm. um, there is a backlash of that where people like you and, and a lot of other people, let's just say that I know that live around here are going the other direction, like back mm -hmm. into doing things like more organic, more pure more as it was intended and to nurture our bodies and stay healthy and mind, soul, body, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of this really cool movement called Outstanding in the Field mm -hmm. where, okay, well, you can look it up out after, but there was an event on the beach and what it is, is this guy founded this organization where he had like the this longest table that you've ever seen, you know, and he goes into different places where they're sourcing like locally grown food and all that. But I see in my mind's eye, like you could do like some things like that, like these amazing, um, mm -hmm. you know, educational type dinner parties um, where you're, you know, using as entertainment venue, but also like educational as well. That would be super, super cool for our area. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, okay. that's stuff that I didn't want to speak on much. We have big plans for all that. So okay. We really, all right. So all that we really want to bring into the area and yeah. it's happening in front of our eyes too. And it's uh, it's it's much needed. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, Harold, from where again? I already forgot. I Sorry. say Atlanta, but okay, kind of all over. So okay, mm -hmm. and you like like it here and having roots here? Yeah, love it. Yeah, love it. I won't ever look back. For yeah, sure. definitely hard not to love this place for sure. The beach, you know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's we went. Uh, we we filmed on the the beach today, and I haven't been on the beach probably for oh my goodness, I don't know, two months or something mm -hmm. like that. And I don't understand why I'm not on that beach like every day because it does invigorate you and and settles you into absolutely being grateful for absolutely living here because they are some amazing beaches, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what else? Um, just, just, this is um, me being the student again. Just give me, you know, we'll kind of close with this, but um, mycology. So the study of fun fungi. Fungi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how into, I mean, you must be, have mastered this by now, right? I wouldn't call myself a master. Okay. I don't know if I ever will. <laughs> okay. Um, just because of how much is going on in it. It's almost hard to keep up. But, really? But yeah, I, I mean, since I dove into it in 2017, it's been you know, complete passion of mine. So for yeah. the past five years, six years now, yeah. I've um, learned everything I could about it. Yeah. I know a good amount about medicinal side. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, but like I spoke on the yeah. micromediation, yes. which is more implemented into like economical stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. I see you speaking in the future and going around <laughs> like the world. I mean, I see like so many things in, in your, your future on this too, because I can tell that you have an unbridled passion for it mm -hmm. and interest and in yeah. And just getting out, I, I encourage everyone to get out in the woods. Um, that's something that kind of we've always talked about for our business and our company. Like that's yeah. about a couple of years ago. I told everyone, I'm like, you know, that part of what we do is going out in the woods at least once a week. But I think that's so important. Just keeping in touch with nature. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much out there to learn mm -hmm. and see. And that's and we, that's what we do all the time. And mm -hmm. people ask us that. They're like, well, mm -hmm. mushrooms are so complex. Like, how do you? And it's like, it's the same thing as plants. Just when you get out there and you experience it, like, you know, maybe pick one or two uh -huh. mushrooms that you see growing, bring them home. Don't eat them, but just, mm -hmm. you know, do a little research on it. And then your knowledge will just expand like crazy. But there's there's so much out there and to learn about. So wow, just getting back out in the woods once a week will do a lot for you. All right. Well. <laughs> Um, this was very interesting. I am super excited to meet you both and I am very excited and happy for your business and I wish you tremendous success, which I know you're going to have. Thank you. And, uh, for everybody listening out there that I know you probably think this was a pretty good interview as well. And, um, uh, I'm super excited to see everything that this turns into and thank you for your time today. And, um, I may get a bag of that soil that you have one we of these days. Brought, we brought you one, oh so my gosh, yeah. no way. You oh, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I love it. Well, so nice to meet both of you yeah, and much same. success. Thank you, so thank you very so much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching and listening, everyone. Please continue to uh, tune in to V Speaks Conversations with Heart and Soul. And we'll be giving you information on the screen um, when we post this podcast so you can find out all that you need to find out about Veil of Paradise Mushrooms with. Joey and Lexi. Thank you and have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.